I finished all the drilling now but luckily before I drilled all the holes what I actually did was I did a test fit with this bolt here and I found that I didn't have any problem with actually getting the bolt in. I did allow enough room to actually get the nut in here and screw it onto the bolt and I had no problem with that but the problem that I did have is when I tried to put the socket on it was actually interfering with this sides of this angle iron here so I wasn't able to put a socket on and tighten it up and that would be a problem because the bolts that I'm using don't have a head on them they're just uh, they're just flat because they're carriage bolts so I need to do something to sort that out so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to fill that hole there and I mentioned earlier about maybe using a piece of copper for filling holes we might as well have a go at that as soon as we've got it to hand here So the reason that I back the hole with a lump of copper is that the molten steel that comes out of the MIG welder, it isn't going to stick to the copper. But the other thing is, because this has got a lot of thermal mass, as soon as that hot metal touches it, it instantly goes cold. So the actual surface of the copper, it's barely got a mark on it. Having filled in the hole, we just need to grind this off now and then we'll drill a hole in the correct location. You may have noticed that the table top on my pedestal here isn't symmetrical and that it sticks out more at the back here than it does at the front and the reason I've done that is because I'm going to put a fluid extraction system so this is going to be running coolant and I need to be able to drain that coolant away and I'm going to let it wash to the back of the machine and then it's going to go down these pipes here into some kind of a collector and then I'm going to take this edge here and I'm going to try and fold it I'm going to try and fold it like you do a piece of card I'm going to score it with the saw and I'm hoping if I score it maybe to within about a millimeter I will be able to then bend this at right angle and this is going to form the back edge of my tray then Now you can maybe see there's just a little bit of swarf hanging off these but the actual cut itself it's beautifully smooth isn't it really good I have to say that these evolution saws do go through metal like a hot knife through butter but one thing that they do is generate an awful lot of these very sharp iron filings and uh, yeah. Now hopefully it's going to come out on camera but you should be able to see that we've actually cut a notch into the sheet of metal. We've actually scored it all the way along and we've cut through probably just over halfway. Now I'm hoping that I'll be able to bend this now but I'm not sure.
shit. Five minutes later. Twenty minutes later. Eventually. Well, as hopefully you saw, I did eventually manage to get my bend in this 6mm plate, but as you could see, it was very sketchy and dangerous, and I'm probably lucky I didn't injure myself. There was only actually one injury, and that's this clamp, which, uh, yes, unfortunately, it isn't going to be clamping anymore. In fact, I can't actually turn it anymore, but I hope you can see that the actual screw part is, uh, yeah, it's pretty severely bent. So that's the only casualty, luckily. Um, it's actually also popped out the ball joint here. So there was obviously a considerable amount of force on these clamps. Um, probably lucky that they didn't give way and I could have gone flying and probably landed on top of my lathe and hurt myself. Don't do that, stupid. As you can see we've achieved pretty much a 90 degree bend here in our 6mm plate and that really wasn't easy to do but unfortunately I was doing so much banging around pushing and pulling I have managed to bend the whole plate I'm not really sure why it chose not to bend here at the point at which I actually put the cut mark in but you can see I've actually very slightly just distorted the whole plate it's actually bending up here now that's going to be a problem because I want the coolant to flow into this hole not actually run away from it because this is going to be a drain so it wants to be like the lowest point on the machine so you know what that means unfortunately I'm going to have to try and put another bend into here Well, don't know if this will work, but I'm wondering if I can use the weight of this pedestal to put its own bend in here. Well, I enjoy snagging my genitals on these sharp metal corners as much as the next man, but I am going to go ahead and remove them.
because I've put this 11 degree fall at the back of the table, the original drains that I've arranged to go on here, they're actually going to hit the vertical back of the pedestal here. So what I've got to do is I've just got to cut a slight angle of them, which is again, put an angle of 11 degrees on just to move them away from there. So, you know, why make something once when you can do it two or maybe three times? And you join us today live from Barnsley, where we're going for the record for who can clamp the most things together using the most clamps. Now we remember that the table does actually slope down at the back so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut this and I'm going to bend it at an angle and then just fix the cut. So here's our drip tray complete with its drain holes and you can see we've gone ahead and we've put this little brim around it and uh, I've got to just fully weld this next but yeah I think that that's actually coming along nicely although I don't think my back is going to forgive me because uh, humping this around has been seriously hard work. Now when I put this pedestal together I thought I'd done really quite a good job at making it all level and certainly when I turned it onto its casters it passed the rock test it's absolutely no rock at all but then when I actually came to move it you can actually see that depending on where I put it on the garage floor again it's okay there now there's some rock so it turns out that having explored the problem, it appears that my garage floor is nowhere near as level as I thought it was. So it appears that my garage floor really isn't level and it seems to have a slope on it of about 2.4 degrees in one direction. Let's turn the level round. So if that was the X dimension, in the Y dimension, again, it's about 3.3 degrees out and you can see that the spirit level bubble, again, it is definitely to one side. You can see that the floor is actually uneven and I've got to admit I always thought that this garage floor was super flat it certainly looks super flat to my untrained eye but clearly it isn't. Now unfortunately there's nothing I can do about the floor being out of level and of course because these casters are adjustable I can always wind the feet down on them to make up for any out of levelness but I think I'd rather try to get these casters set as level as possible so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a go at just levelling this table up. Now I've got to admit I'm not sure the best way to go about this so if you've got a better idea leave it in the comments because I'm sure there's probably a standard way of doing this kind of thing. I don't know what it is so I'm going to wing it as normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install some jacking bolts at each corner of this tabletop and then I'm going to turn it over and then I'm going to use a straight edge to actually level up the base by adjusting these uh, jacking bolts that I install and then having installed them jacking bolts I'm going to use a laser level which should be self aligning I'm going to shine that at the nuts on the casters and we should be able to see how close we are to level that's the plan, I don't know if that's a good idea or not if you've got a better idea leave it in the comments now if I was actually working in a fabrication shop I wouldn't have this problem because what we'd have is a big metal table, a flat plate and we would actually have done all the fabrication on top of that flat plate so we'd know that everything that we were doing was actually true, was reference to the plate. Unfortunately I don't have such a big flat plate so I'm just going to have to make do with doing it by this method. Of course this is maybe what I should have done in the first place but well don't know about you but 
I certainly learn a lot from my mistakes and I sure do make a lot of mistakes. So my level seems to be telling me that this side is high by 0.7 of a degree. So if I actually lift this up, is that going to correct it? It is. Supporting about 0.5 of a degree now, so it has come down a bit, but I'm surprised how much I've had to jack this up quite a lot. Okay, so we're in about 0.4 of a degree now. Got to admit, these adjustments are a bit fiddly and probably boring for you to watch, so I'll bring you back when I've done it. And I've levelled up the top of the table, which is actually touching the floor at the moment, and I've got it within zero degrees in both the X and Y. Firing the self-leveling laser here at the screw mounting for the caster wheel, I can see that this caster is pretty much bang on the laser strikes in the centre of the bolt head, as does this one, as does this one. But I think the caster on the back here is just a little high. I think it's higher than the others by just a couple of millimetres, but I'm really not concerned because, as you'll probably remember, these casters do have these feet which will jack downwards and will lift it up. So when I've got the piece of equipment sat on top of the table, I'll probably go ahead and level this again, but at least I know I've done my best to make it level out of the box. Well, we're about a week later now, and for the last couple of days I've been sneezing grey primer. And after several sessions with the spray cans, I was actually left feeling quite unwell because of all the paint fumes I'd probably inhaled. Now I did actually have one of these little paper masks on, effectively just a dust mask, and I'm sure that that did block a lot of the uh, kind of aerosol spray, but unfortunately it didn't stop me breathing in probably a lot of the solvent. Now I already have breathing difficulties, I do suffer from asthma and I take inhalers on a daily basis. So I am really sensitive to things like paint fumes and I should have been more careful. So off the back of making myself a little bit poorer, what I decided to do is buy a cheap respirator mask. So this mask here, in theory, it's got special activated carbon filters inside it, which will do things like neutralise some of the solvents that are in spray paints. And it was only, well the cost was about £18 here in the UK, so I think I probably should have bought one of these previously before I started the painting. So, you know, lesson learned. But the main reason I bought this is because it says it does deal with paint fumes. And the other thing is, it was available next day on Amazon, which was important because I wanted to get the project finished. So we will just take a quick look inside it, just in case anybody is thinking of getting one of these. Okay, looks like we've got some covers here. They look like dust filters. And then we've got the actual active filters here. And it comes with some clips. Let's hope they're spares because I can't really be bothered fitting them. Of course, we're not going to bother reading the instructions. How hard can it be? So here's our two active filters. I'm sure we need to put the dust filters in front of them. Okay, it does say put the printed side facing away from you for best results. So I guess turn that over. And then I'm sure we just snap these on top of there just to hold them in place. I'm guessing I could also wear these filters when I'm welding because again, some of the vapours given off by welding isn't particularly good for you either. Um, I'm not sure if it would fit under my welding helmet though, I'm not sure. Now occasionally I have bought more professional equipment in the past and I think that they do actually recommend that you go and have things like fitted because everybody has slightly different face size and it is possible that you know the ones that just come out of the box may not be the perfect fit for you so it probably is worth you going somewhere where you can maybe just try some of these on make sure that they fit your particular face however on this occasion I just didn't have time to do that because I needed something that I could just purchase and start using right away Okay, I think they go on like that. I'm just going to pop this on my noggin. I don't need to remove glasses. Feels quite comfortable. think it fits okay. Have I got it on right? Tell me if not. Glasses need to go back on because I can't see without them. And I think maybe I can use this as a bit of a camera condom because I don't want my camera being covered in paint so let's slip you on get you bagged up 
Okay, well you can't see quite as well, but it'll have to do. So I've had this heater running for about the last hour because it's still quite cold here and I think it does help just to warm everything up. And I have also just been slightly warming the paint up again because I think it helps to take the chill off because it's cold here. No idea why, but shaking paint cans just comes naturally to me. Well that's not a good sign, don't know why, but it seems to be reacting slightly with this primer spray, but well, I'm going to keep going because it's what I've got. That's actually pretty much most of the kind of blue paint already done there. The part that you can use spray cans, I think more of it actually goes into the air and it ends up going on the thing you're trying to spray. I'm sure some of you might be worried about things like overspray, but to be honest, I'm not. Well it's currently about 9.30 on a Thursday evening and I've been working away from home this week at an exhibition in Birmingham so unfortunately I haven't had much time to play with my machine pedestal but you can see that I have got on the floor here I've got my engine crane because I've got the machine coming tomorrow so I really need to finish off this pedestal so I can actually put the machine atop of it this weekend. Now maybe it's not actually a bad thing that I have been away all week because it's probably given this paint just a little bit of time just to go off and set a bit harder because when I left it although it seemed to be touch dry it was still you know soft you could dig a fingernail into it so it has actually hardened up quite nicely now. I am quite pleased with the way this pedestal's come out. The paint actually looks really good. Now, unfortunately, it probably is going to get scratched up when I try to lift the machine on here because I've got to lift the machine onto it, which I think is going to be quite hard work, even using the engine crane. And then I'm going to have to drill some mounting points for it so it doesn't walk itself off the bench when I'm actually cutting things. So it's probably end up getting scratched up, and certainly it's going to get scratched up in use. But right now, it looks lovely. So what I have to do tonight is install these coaching bolts. So I've got to cut them down and I'm hoping that the square ends here will just pull in and they won't rotate. And I'm also going to put quite a dab of silicon on the top side of the tray and on the threads of the bolt because I don't want coolant running through these holes and getting inside the pedestal and I think I'm also going to put some silicon under the tray here because the underside of the tray here and then the top side of the pedestal we could actually get coolant trapped in this area so I think again if I can put silicon on there I think it might help stop any leaks but the silicon is actually quite a strong adhesive I ho I'm hoping that it will help you know just bond everything together as well so that's tonight's plan. As you saw this tray is actually manufactured from some quite thick steel and it's also got this 4mm steel rim around it so quite heavy so hopefully you're going to get at the other side of this tabletop and you're going to give us a lift with it so on four, one, two, three, four. Okay well you've not had your wheat a bit have you so uh, I guess if a job's worth doing. One, two, three, uh, straight back. Let's just try this bolt on for size. I think this one's about 40 millimetres long. Okay, that seems just a little on the long side. I think I can probably cut maybe another 10 millimetres off that. Now, because it's late at night, I can't exactly go banging around tonight, so I can't have the grinders going. So I'm going to have to get out the handsaw. Unfortunately, I've got a load of stuff balanced in front of the vice here, so I'm going to have to lean over that. <laughs> Okay, that's one down, just another seven to go. And here's a tip for if you do have to cut down a bolt, in that when you actually cut it, it's going to leave like a bit of a jagged edge on it usually. Now you can file that off, but if you install the nut first, 
when you actually undo the nut it'll straighten up the threads here because otherwise sometimes you find you can't actually put a nut on afterwards so install the nut first cut off the bolt then take the nut off and that'll just uh, it'll just reform the threads on the end of here stop them from jamming up i think that you'll see on camera that there's four little holes around the periphery of this hole that we've drilled for the bolt and that's where this square head is digging in so yeah i think that will work fine if we just file a little bit of the corners of all the bolts so i'm going to go and do that i'll bring you back when i've done before going mad with a silicon gun i'm going to put some gloves on now my wife got me these because uh, she said she preferred the feel of the extra large black ones oops <laughs> oops now i've spotted there is a few more holes in the table so we might as well splodge a bit of silicon on them while we're at it it's all going to squash down nicely one assumes And as usual, far too much is probably the right amount. I think I'm just going to nip these bolts up and then what I'll do is I'm going to wait for the silicon to dry a little bit and then I'll tighten them just a little bit more because if I tighten them up fully now it'll actually compress all the silicon out of the way and uh, it won't make as good a seal so what we'll do is we'll nip the bolts down to final tightness later on. Thank you. 